The Great Search brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Every single week, Lady uses her power of engineering to find stuff online at digikey.com. And guess what? It's hard to find stuff. We've been doing this before there was a part shortage. We'll be doing this after Lady Ada. What is the Great Search of the Week this week? Okay. This week, I'm looking for a new part that I'm going to put on my ESP32 Cutie Pie. Do you mind clicking on the Pico board? I can show the back of it. The left, 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 left. This one? Left. One more. This one? Bang. Right. Okay. So the ESP32 is a kind of interesting chip because it doesn't have native USB, so you've got to add a USB serial converter, and that's the second chip, the one in that kind of the middle top there. The ESP32 is the thing on the bottom. Um, so we've got a CP2102, and we covered the CP2102 as a USB serial converter, like a low-cost, small USB serial converter, and that's all good. Um, but there's an, another little thing. Not only do you need the USB serial for RX and TX data, but by doing this a kind of funky trick with two NPN transistors, um, you can use the pulses from the RTS and DTR lines on the USB serial converter to reset the ESP32 um, into bootloader mode. And this is similar to um, if you have an Arduino, the Arduino also used RTS or DTR to toggle the reset line to kind of auto reset the board from USB serial converters. Um, for the ESP32, they didn't connect the DTR and RTS directly. Um, instead, they have this little transistor like flippy floppy thingy going on there, which I once analyzed and then I've totally forgotten how it works. So let's go to the computer and I will um, pop up the schematic and I'll show you the parts. So this is um, what it looks like. Um, you connect, there's IO0 is the bootloader pin and reset is the um, reset pin for the chip. And then RTS and DTR, when they do a little toggle, um, they will you know, they will lower the uh, IO0 pin, which is tells it to go to bootloader mode on reset. And then it quickly toggles the reset pin to set it to reset. It comes out of reset, IO0 is still low. Um, it knows it should go into bootloader mode. So the only thing is I need to uh, get a dual NPN. Now I've got N-channel FETs here, but you can't use N-channel FETs. I'm, I've never actually tried it, but like every schematic from Espresso uses an, uh, two NPNs. So I'm gonna assume you need NPN. That said, um, I do like the dual BSS that we use on a lot of our boards. It's um, this part here and it's nice and small. So these are 0402 resistors. This is a TSOP6, also known as a, known as a SOP363. Um, it's, it's finer pitched than a SOP236, which is um, a SOP23 is, I'll show you. So this is a, a SOP23 size. So it's, it's significantly larger. Um, I'll use a SOP23 for a power supply, but for something that's not using a lot of power, like this dual FET thing, um, a SOP363 is, is perfectly fine. And you actually can solder them by hand. Like they're, they're fine pitch, but they're uh, 0.5 millimeters. So they're not, they're not gonna kill you. Um, you can hand solder them. We use them by like the hundreds of thousands. Every STEMIQ QT board, um, we include uh, a dual FET to do the level shifting for I squared C. And so we stock thousand, thousand of them. But again, those are BSS138 N channel FETs. This time we want, um, dual NPN. So let's go to um, DigiKey. First up, I want to mention, so this is the, the dual FET that we use, um, BSS 138 BKS. We have a quarter million stock because we actually go through like 10,000 a day uh, easily. Because um, there's, there's like two or three on like almost every single board that we make. Um, so this very small part, and this is the part, and I actually couldn't remember the name of the package. So what I did, I was like, oh, I want if I want something in the same package, I'll actually look up what DigiKey calls the package, and then it'll just make it a little easier for me to um, find the part. So this is called a, uh, this has multiple names, and that's not unusual. Sometimes when they get these small chips, uh, they have different names. So this is called a 6T SOP, or SC88, or a SOP 363. So good to know. Anyway, so we, what we want is a dual NPN. <coughs> Pardon me. There's a couple NPNs. Um, just be careful because I actually w accidentally went to single. Like I went to single first and I started searching. You can't, you have to go to arrays. Um, and 
NFANs come in a couple different configurations, so it's, it's not a big deal, just watch out for it. Um, sometimes they do you a favor by connecting stuff inside, but we want two completely separate NPN transistors. And again, for more, most of our ESP32 boards, we just have two SOT23s, but we just don't have any space on this board. It's so small, I have to go with the SOT363. So let's go with in stock active. And then um, let's look at that package. So again, I like the, the package that I've got the BSS138 in, which is a 6 TSOP SC88363. There's probably smaller, um, but this is pretty small. I think like a D, you know, UDFN will be smaller, but I like things with pads, you know, for stuff this small. Um, okay, so let's apply. Oh, one thing to, um, because I picked something with six pads, I sort of solved one problem, but um, if you look at the configuration, um, you can get common emitter. Common emitter means the emitters to connect together. This is really good for um, uh, differential measurements or amplifiers. Um, <clears throat> there's quad, of course, and then there's uh, matched pair and non-matched. Matched pair, like it means that the this, there's this, they're guaranteed to be within a certain percentage of the same VBE, like whatever, like the the amount of current that they're going to pass and the um, voltage offset you're going to get. Like they're going to act very similar, and again, that makes it better for um, d differential signal measurements. In this case, it doesn't matter because again, we're using them totally separate. But also, um, we don't want common emitter, so I don't mind looking for matched pair. But you usually have to pay a little bit more for matched pairs. Um, if you do synthesizers, you're going to constantly be doing match pair stuff, but I'm not doing synthesizers. I'm doing a cutie pie, so that's cool. Um, okay, back to this. Once I select that, um, yeah, there's only match pair and non-match pair, which I don't care about. And then when I go down here, um, I sorted by price just to see, like, okay, well, how much am I going to pay for these? Um, and one thing I noticed is that the ones that are the least expensive, like these Pum X2s, from Nexperia, um, they have a min quantity and uh, there's no way to like not select. I don't know that there's a way to select something that doesn't have um, a min quantity, but if you click here, you can only buy this by the reel. Like if I try to buy 300, it's gonna say no. So that's not like a bad thing. Like I might use these, but if I'm gonna get samples, which is what I'm doing right now, um, I wanna get something where I don't have to purchase a large quantity. So, for example, like this has a minimum quantity of like 4,000 and I don't want to buy 4,000. Um, so what I did is when I got to um, these two on semis, this BC84-7, um, these are the ones where I saw like, oh, they have plenty in stock. Um, there's two versions. There's one from Pangit and there's one from, uh, there's a couple from Pangit and one from on semi. And these have a minimum quantity of only one. So, you know, it's tough because I, the other ones are much less expensive, although it's, at, you know, minimum quantity and maybe at the minimum quantity or the quantity I need, it'll be about the same. But I'm getting only samples right now anyways. Um, so I order the sample PC samples when I get the PCBs on order. So by the time the PCBs make it to me, I've got all the, the components. Um, but these are in stock and uh, they look just fine. So I'm going to pick these up. I'm going to try them out. And, you know, nothing really beats just soldering them into a circuit with an ESP32 and just... Uh, checking that it works, but I'm pretty confident it will. Like the ESP32 reset circuit is like very well tested and tried. So even though I've never tried this particular transistor, um, you know, they have a, the voltage limits are reasonable. The current collector, the, collect, the current max current to the collector is reasonable. Um, the DC gain is reasonable. Everything, this is a very jelly bean part. So no reason why it won't work. So this is gonna, I'm gonna pick up 50 of these and get ready for when my ESP32 cutie pie arrives. This is the one part that I don't already have stocked. And that's a great search.